In this video, we're going to interface an LCD to the microcontroller. Just like an LED, the LCD is an output device. It's a way that you can get information from the microcontroller. Unlike the LED, however, you can get much more information displayed onto this LCD. You can have alphanumeric characters on the LCD and it can tell you um, quite a bit of uh, information that you tell it through the microcontroller. I'm going to show you how to interface the LCD to the microcontroller. Um, I'll also show you how to control the LCD using the microcontroller and how to display information on the LCD. We're going to do this in a very detailed way. We'll, we won't be using any libraries, but we can form a library um, with the information that I will present to you on this, in this tutorial. So you're probably wondering what libraries are. Libraries are used to organize code, especially when code gets too long or you need code for reuse. Let's take our button game as an example. We could have actually separated out the, the button processes. We had our main, and this is our, our main.c file. We could have had a, let's say, button pressed process and a button released process all in a totally different file. This could be called, let's say, button, uh, button process.c. You may also have a button process.h file. A very simplistic view of what a .h file and a .c file is, let's say you have your main routine. Anything that is defined or declared above the main, which this would be like the int main, anything in this area, which is uh, defined or declared, you know, like the variables or, or the include statements, would be above the main. That would be considered the header. And anything that would be below the main, the main routine, and the main routine, just to, for clarification, that, that would be where the while loop is. Anything below it would be the .c file. So any code that would happen down here, you could make a .c file um, to represent that, and then anything in the, in the top would be a .h file for header. And any libraries you create, you'd essentially be creating both of these. You'd be creating a .h file, a header file, and a .c file to contain all the actual running code. In this tutorial, we're going to be getting into great detail on creating the, the libraries. So we'll explain more. I'll explain more as I go deeper into uh, creating these files. Controlling and displaying information on an LCD is actually quite simple. All we're going to be doing is feeding ones and zeros to these pins. Let's first get to know the pins of this LCD. Each of these pins have its, its own functions. Starting with the number one pin, you can see on the other side of this, you'll see a number one. This will indicate the number one pin. Starting from the number one pin, which is this one here, we have the VSS, which means ground. The next pin, number two, is VDD, which is the supply of, um, of five volts. The third pin, is V0, which is contrast adjustment. The next pin, which is number four, is RS, which is the register signal, register select signal. Pin number five is the RW, which is read write. And then pin number six is the enable signal. And pins seven through 10 these are the four low data lines. And then the next four are the four high data lines. You can already see that these four and these four, this makes a four bit number and this makes a four bit number. And together these make one eight bit number. These last two relate to having a backlight or uh, a backlit display. And in this particular one, an LED is being used. And the pin number 17, I'm sorry, and the pin number 15 is the anode or the power. And the pin number 16 is the, the ground. You may not actually have these last two pins. It depends on the, the LCD display that you have and that you selected for your application. When it comes to setting up the circuit, we'll be mainly um, working with the VSS VDD, uh, the V0, which is gonna be the contrast. We may put a potentiometer here or put a, um, just put a uh, resistor 
to get the contracts that we want, contrast that we want. Uh, but when we're doing some data transfer, when we're actually um, controlling or displaying data on the on the LCD, we'll be concerned with the RS, the R R W, the four bits low, the four bits high, and um, there are two main ways you can connect a an LCD. You can use it with all four bits, all both banks of four bits, or one eight bit number, um, one eight bit. Uh, and that would be connected to a port on the, the microcontroller. Or you can use it with just the four high bit data lines. And this is just these, these four here. And this would enable four bit operation. And what this does is it allows you to use fewer pins on your, on your microcontroller. But you have to set the instructions in a, in a different format. And you'd have to do it in, in, four, in four bit um, instructions uh, every time you send information here. It's a little bit uh, more cumbersome for uh, sending information, but it's still uh, pretty easy to do. In our first setup, we're going to go ahead and do all eight, uh, all eight pins to one port, and we're going to be bringing these pins, the RS and RW, to another port. Um, it doesn't really matter. We can uh, select a pin that we want to use uh, just to toggle these on and off. So let's go ahead and wire up our circuit. The port that you use to connect the data lines to your microcontroller should take careful consideration because these ports are also assigned other uses. For instance, the port on the back end here uh, also serve as the um, analog to digital converter and I'll be using that for for other uh, purposes so I don't want to put my LCD there if you're not going to be using the the port A then for analog to digital use then that could be a good candidate for that uh, port B really for my um, for my consideration it's probably the best one to use because uh, really this is um, quite a bit um, on just communicating uh, for the serial peripheral interface. Port D, I'll be using for other purposes as well, and mainly that will be for uh, doing the UART or serial communications. And port C would also be a pretty good candidate for um, for the applications that I'm going to be using. But take careful consideration or take a careful look at the pin assignments and determine which pins that you will be using for um, other peripherals like sensing or whatever. Uh, and use the port that you're generally not going to be using for your um, LCD. This LED is from a previous project, so I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to put the, the LCD, I'm going to put it here so it doesn't get in the way. Just put it in this location. And I'll just wire the, uh, the specific pins to the pins that I, I need that I'll be assigning to the LCD. The type of wiring, and communications for that matter, is considered a bus. And a bus is essentially just uh, more than, uh, or actually four, uh, a four bit or an eight bit um, set of uh, data lines or wires going from, uh, like say the port B to these, um, these pins. Um, you're just essentially creating a, um, a set of signals. Um, you're gonna be outputting a, an eight bit integer from your, your microcontroller and sending it to the to the LCD, and just you're going to do that simultaneously. Uh, that is considered um, when it's when it's multiple wires doing uh, doing that sort of operation in one instruction. It's considered uh, bus communications, and the wires are always going to be in the same configuration. So it's it might be easier just to wire um, a set of um, headers. Uh, to another set of headers and just plug those in, essentially like how a ribbon cable would be used. Starting from the side that the number one uh, pin exists, this is uh, VSS VDD, I think this was RS, read, write, enable, and then this is the D0. And number their numbering is, <clears throat> the numbering starts from the side that the one, one pin exists, uh, starts from D0 and then goes up to D7. You want to make sure that your D0 is going to port B pin 0 or whatever port you're using. It goes to pin 0, D1 goes to pin 1, D2 goes to pin 2, D3 goes to pin 3 and so on. Uh, so when you do uh, write your 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 bytes, your 8-bit um, uh, numbers to these pins of the microcontroller, then uh, you're going to get uh, what you expect out of the, the LCD. We'll start with D0 and go to pin 
B0. To find the D0 pin, the easiest way to go is if you have the backlight um, pins, just start from there and then you have D7, D6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I'll start with that one. I'm going to go to pin B0. So we have D0 going to pin B0. We have pin D1 going to pin B1. We have pin D2 that will go to pin B2. Pin D3 to pin B3. Pin D4 to pin B4. Pin D5 to pin B5. Pin D6 to pin B6. Pin B7 to pin D, oh, that one's not long enough. Pin B7 or pin D7 to pin B7. Okay, so that's that takes care of all of the, the data lines. Now we're gonna connect the ground and power to the LCD. The first pin goes to ground, so I'm gonna just put a wire from the first pin and connect it to the negative rail here. That's not gonna work. Here we go, the negative rail. And you can see that says negative here. And then the VSS, or I'm sorry, and now the VDD will go to the positive, which is the, the five volts. So the next pin is VDD. We're gonna connect that to power, which is on the plus rail here. Okay. For the V0 pin, we're gonna wanna put, this is the V0 here. We're gonna to wanna to put a variable resistor or a potentiometer here so we can actually adjust the contrast of the LCD. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. The V0 pin um, can, be, can be used with a variable resistor of 10K or 20K resistance. Um, and that can be adjusted to get the desired contrast. Uh, the potentiometer will be, um, will be connected to the five volt rail and it will also be connected to the, uh, the ground rail. Um, and then uh, the third pin or the, the, the middle pin, which, which is the, um, the sweeping pin, will be connected to the V0. Uh, let's do that now. With variable resistors or potentiometers, there, there are many types that you can choose from. But there's one thing that's consistent, and there's always three leads. Well, in most of them, there are three leads um, in all the, the typical ones. And you'll see that um, there are really tiny ones, and you can have the large ones. These large ones are generally um, used in, in on panels, so you can adjust it manually from a panel uh, from the outside of the box of the, the, the circuit. And these small ones are actually ones that you don't want to manually adjust from the outside of the circuit. Um, and it's only really used for optimization or, or uh, trimming um, or just uh, adjusting before the the uh, package is closed and and sent off to the customer so but I'll be using one of these small ones since I don't really um, really, really want to use a, a really large bulky potentiometer in the in the uh, tutorial so we'll probably be using uh, something that looks more like this and we'll just be using uh, a screwdriver to be able to adjust it you can see that there's a square or a rectangular um, shaped hole in the center and that's used uh, with a screwdriver to be able to get the the adjustment done. You can see that there's a really small rectangle and that's used for adjusting with a screwdriver. I'm going to place the potentiometer off to the side here. The two leads on the bottom will be will be wired to uh, ground and and five volts. It doesn't really matter which which one goes, goes to ground and which one goes to five five volts because when if you reverse it it just means that you have to turn the potentiometer the other direction so let's put this lead to five volts and we'll take the other lead and put that to ground okay now we're going to take our last lead and we're going to wire it to the v0 the next pin so this is v0 here 
to the third pin or the wiper pin of the potentiometer. The RS pin is the next pin and I'm deciding to use the RS pin connecting, um, I'm going to connect the RS pin to uh, one of the pins on port D and I'll be using, actually port D is over here, and I'll be using an interrupt pin. So the RS2 pin, so the RS pin, which is right here, will be connected to the PD2 pin, which is interrupt zero. PD2 is number 16. So let's go to that pin. Okay, the next pin, which is the read-write pin, um, <clears throat> I want to take that pin to a pin that is not an interrupt pin, because I'll be using that maybe for another purpose later on. And the next pin is the read-write pin, which I need to specify whether I'm writing to the LCD or I'm reading from the LCD. And I'm going to connect that to the PD7, which is my output compare, reg um, I'm sorry, my output compare for a timer. And I don't foresee using that um, anytime in the near future. So that's the PD7 there. And the read write is going to PD7, which is the OC the output compare pin. So now we're at the enable, the enable lead. And this is our final one. We're gonna put this wire to the, the PD5, which is one next to the last one. And this is the, the, the OC1A, which I have the, the B if I need it, so I can use one of them. Before we get into the programming, it's good to know how the LCD functions. The LCD is this very dark box. And there's a person inside this LCD, Mr. LCD. Mr. LCD is very slow. And the box is generally dark, but there's a light switch inside. The light switch is called enable. Another characteristic of Mr. LCD is that he's really busy. Most of the time he's busy, so we're always going to have to check to see the state of Mr. LCD and if he's busy or not. When we're trying to give him information, Mr. LCD, we always have to make sure that the light switch, which is the enable switch, is on so he can see the information that we're giving him. When the light switch is on, he may not want to listen for information. He may want to give us information. So we have another switch called the read-write switch. This read-write switch forces Mr. LCD to either listen or tell us information. There's another really important aspect of Mr. LCD, and he doesn't like to do anything in the light. He doesn't like to process any information. He doesn't like to work in the light. He likes to work in the dark. So after we give him some information, whether it is a character or it's a command, we have to make sure first the light is on, and then for him to do anything with it, we need to turn the light back off. So to make Mr. LCD do anything, first we have to check to see if he's busy. Then we have to turn his light on. We also have to make sure that he will listen. And because Mr. LCD is generally listening, we have to make sure that his read-write switch is off. So he'll be listening to us. And I forgot something. Mr. LCD is also a bit bipolar. Fortunately, you're, you can control his mood. He has what is called an RS switch. And if you turn this RS switch on, he will accept data that can be displayed on, on, the, on the LCD. But if RS is off, he will accept only commands. And data generally means that it could be an alphanumeric um, character that is displayed on the, the LCD, and a command can be controlling the cursor or, um, you know, bringing the cursor to the beginning or bringing the cursor back or, or, or incrementing the cursor location. So after, the, after you check whether Mr. LCD is busy and you turn his light on and you make sure that his read-write is off, we also need to make sure that he has the right mood. So if we're going to give him a command, we would put this, make this off. And then the next thing we do is we send the data. And that is simply assigning a particular number or a binary number to the port that is plugged into the, uh, the, the D0 through 7. In this case, we're using port B, but you can use any port that you want. And we just make port B equal to something. And this something is simply a number that corresponds to a particular command. 
and those commands are listed in the datasheet, but I will get to that later. And because Mr. LCD is a bit slow, we have to make sure this send data or the data, the port B is equal to this something for a little while. Um, in, in most LCD cases, that's about 500 nanoseconds. But in real world, that's really, really tiny amount. Um, and we'll have a couple of statements that extend the timing of this port being equal to something for a little longer. It's called an assembly, um, it's an assembly command called NOP. And I'll show you how to do this in programming. And remember, Mr. LCD likes to think in the dark. So for him to complete our task, we need to turn off the light. And just to review, only because this RS is off, he will only accept commands. So if the RS is on, and we, we perform the same steps, first we check the busy, we make sure his light is on, and the read-write is set for listening, which is off. When the RS is on, he will be able to accept a character to be displayed on the screen. So right after this, we send the data which will be what is called an ASCII character, which, is, which means American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And then, so he can process this information, we turn the light back off. Remember that before we turn the light off, we need to give him a little bit of time to comprehend the information we've given him. So we use the NOP a few times. And this NOP will maybe, it might, it might be different uh, between micro uh, microcontrollers because some microcontrollers are faster than others and you may need more NOPs to give Mr. LCD a little bit more time to comprehend the information. To do this thing, checking if he's busy, we need to read him. We need to make sure that he tells us whether he is busy or not. So we first want to make sure that he's in the read-write mode of give me information or on, which is the read mode. We need to turn his light back on and his bipolar mode needs to be off in the commands mode. And because he's a bit slow, we have to wait for the information. So generally we have to wait 300 to 500 nanoseconds. So we're gonna introduce another NOP a few times and then we can save the data that he's given us. And the information on the data will be either 0, B, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or it will be 0, B, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This equals busy, and this equals not busy. And if you remember in the previous um, tutorial on hexadecimal, if you split this into four, four-bit numbers, you know that this will be equal to zero, zero. And this, because the one is right here, this will be equal to eight, zero. So back down here, if the check busy is equal to 80 in hex, or it's equal to zero, I'm sorry, one, zero, 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 then you know it's busy and you can't perform this operation he would just not accept it because he's just a busy busy LCD. Um, but if it checks out to be zero or not 80, then you can go ahead and process this information or this information and you can get the mark, you can get the LCD to do things. You'll also notice a lot of commonality between these two operations. They both have the check busy, they both have the enable on, they both have the read write off, um, these are different, but this and the send data are the only differences, and then the enable is off again. So this can be put into its own little subroutine, and this, obviously, this is, doesn't need to because it's, you know, just a one-line operation anyway, so you don't really need to. But we, you can, we can already see some things we can, we can put into, into its, their own routines, and the check busy can be in its own routine as well. Generally, when you want to put something on the LCD or you want to control the LCD, you want it done immediately. So we're going to go ahead and do these operations step by step. We're going to check the busy, and we're going to keep checking it until it's not busy, and then we're going to process our um, our commands so we can get the LCD to do something. This is quite a bit of information for one video, so I'm going to split this up into two main videos. Actually, probably three because um, there's a lot m there's a lot of things we can do with an LCD. Um, so we'll probably split it up into several videos. So I'm going to stop it there. And in our next video, we'll be printing characters and controlling the cursor on the LCD. And in the next video, I'll show you how to um, display numbers.
because we're going to be doing quite a bit of testing of different sensors and things like that. And we're going to show the um, analog to digital conversion, or we're going to show a, um, uh, a pulse width modulated signal on the input pin of the timer. And we're going to show you what number um, that relates to in the microcontroller. And that will be very useful when you're starting to sense the environment.